Welcome back Chooms, my name is Lars Nomil and today we're gonna be talking about Militech, one of the biggest mega corporations in the cyberpunk universe and one of the main players in cyberpunk 2077. Now do keep in mind, even though in the base game of cyberpunk 2077 Militech wasn't really there, I do believe that right now in Phantom Liberty coming out and the new United States government being involved, Militech is going to be everywhere because new United States of America is heavily tied with Militech itself. So how did it come to that? How did Militech achieve the greatness and success they have today? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about, so let's begin. Now, Militech in the cyberpunk universe is the biggest uh, arms supplier all around the world. They make everything from pistols, assault rifles, various types of rocket launchers, tanks, aircrafts, you name it, Militech's got it. They sell to all kinds of private entities, to various political parties around the world, to various governments, including, as I said, the new United States government. And annually, the new United States government makes 60% of profit Militech makes because, well, they require a lot of guns and Militech is more than happy to provide all of that. Now, initially Militech was founded in 1996 by weapons manufacturer Antonio Lucchesi. Now, do keep in mind, when it actually started, Militech was called Armatech Lucchesi International and they were not really popular during those times and they were kind of a small company with only Antonio Lucchesi making a few weapons. But Antonio Lucchesi as a weapons manufacturer was brilliant. All of his weapons that he created were relatively cheap, reliable and extremely deadly in combat. This is specifically what everyone would want. So how did the new United States government or government in general get in bed with Militech and so on? Well, the story lies actually in 1996 when the US military was looking for a new standard service weapon. Because the M16A2 they had at the time simply was not working anymore, so what they decided to do was found someone who was going to, well, create a new weapon and they're going to use that weapon for all of their future wars. So when it came to the finalists of this whole competition, there were three. The first one was FN Sap, a weapon which was kind of cheap but extremely unreliable in combat, but for the United States government, having a weapon like that you know, that you can buy cheaply and give it to all your troops was definitely something they're going to keep their eye on. Then there was the Colt AR-17X, another weapon which uh, is extremely reliable and extremely good, but at the same time it was extremely expensive to buy. So if you have a weapon which is good, but at the same time extremely expensive, there is no way you're going to have the budget to fill in your troops, so that weapon was kinda alright. And the last one, the last submission, was actually from Antonio Lucchesi. It was an amazing rifle which was affordable and extremely deadly in combat, and all of the tests actually show that this weapon is the best. But you know how it is in the government, they kinda always decide for the worst possible outcome and the worst possible result, so ultimately they decided to go with the FN SAP. And when that happened, people actually thought that there is some link between the Fabrique International and the government because they said, alright, there has to be a reason why you chose that weapon. So a lot of people assumed that there is some internal deal happening between the two. So ultimately, the FNSAP was the weapon chosen by the US government. And the problem is, in 2003, when the South American conflict began and the United States Army basically attacked the cartels in that area, FNSAP completely failed and it resulted in huge casualties when it comes to US military. But during the selection of those weapons, on the council itself there was a US Marine Corps general, Donald Lundy. And Don Lundy actually saw the weapon which was created by Armatech, by Lucchesi, and he said, yeah, this is going to be the weapon which is going to win our wars, and this is going to be the weapon we have to choose. So ultimately, when they took the FN SAP, and later on when Lundy saw what the weapon was not capable of, and he saw all of those deaths happening in that South American conflict, he said maybe it's a time for change. So before that, before that even happened, when the FN SAP was actually selected, Donald Lundy retired from the US military and he got a job at Armatech International. Because you see, Donald Lundy was that 
government soldier pentagon type of guy so he was capable of going through various places to lobby for his weapons to be there and at the same time he has had a combat experience so he is going to know what people ultimately do want when it comes to weapons in general so the collaboration between Lucchesi and Lundy was a huge success where Lundy became the CEO of Armatec and slowly but surely their weapon actually made it into the hands of the US government. Because Lundy also streamlined the production with Lucchesi so that allowed them to make more weapons and at the same time they were able to upgrade those weapons to the point where there hasn't a chance at all that US government is going to say no because of the price and the quality of that weapon so Lundy is kind of a 50% responsible for that happening. So the Militech Ronin light assault rifle finally saw the light of day and because because Lucchesi received all of the funding he needed from Lundy and his contacts to work on his stuff, that weapon finally became a standard service model for the US government and it proved to be an amazing decision. And after that happened, they received a huge boost in their sales and company recognition, where now everyone around the globe was looking for Militech weapons, or well, at that time, Armatech Lucchesi International Weapons. So they had to rebrand, they had to do something else, so ultimately, the name Militech Arms International came to be. And by 2010, Militech was everywhere. They were going all around the globe selling their weapons and ultimately they expanded their arsenal. So besides now making small arms and assault rifles, they started making artillery systems, tanks, radars, aircrafts, everything a nation or a corporation or a small private army is going to need. So Militech was in charge of everything and all of their competition they had was either ran out of business or completely bought out by them and Lundy wanted more. Because you see, Lundy was kind of obsessed with success and in his mind he wanted Militech to somewhat rule the world. He wanted this corporation to be the one which is going to supply everyone with everything so ultimately this was kind of a problem because even though he ran out everyone else from business there was another corporation which was equally causing issues because you see Militech is based in Washington DC so ultimately when you have a rival corporation being Arasaka coming from Japan you kinda have to worry a little bit about what is going on and how are people going to react to it so in a sense Lundy was not only fighting for Militech to be number one, he also was slowly but surely poking into Arasaka. Now you see, because of all of these deals with the government, slowly but surely Militech and the US government became like this, where you had a bunch of ex-Militech presidents and CEOs, like for example Elizabeth Kress, become the actual president. And when you have a corporate which worked at Militech become a president, of course this is going to be great for their company, so ultimately when that happened, Lundy was on top of the world because Militech is now in charge of everything and they have the US government on the their side so maybe it's time to rile up some feathers. And as the slowly but surely buildup of conflict was going between Arasaka and Militech, there was something else brewing on the horizon. Because you see, you have Sino and Otec, two aqua corps who just recently went to war. So those two corporations are basically fighting their naval battles for resources and basically the positioning that they're going to be conducting their operations in. And ultimately this became a real war. So what they had to do is they had to seek for reinforcements because those two Two corporations simply did not have enough firepower to fight each other, so they started hiring Militech and Arasaka, where Otec chose Militech and Sino chose Arasaka. And after a year of brutal conflicts all around, Militech and Arasaka finally clashed with each other. Now do keep in mind, a year after that, in February of 2022, Sino and Otec finally, you know, signed a peace deal and the combat stopped, all of the conflicts ceased to exist. But the problem is, you had Arasaka and Militech pent up against each other and they didn't want to stop. So only 7 days after that happened, new conflict actually began. So what Arasaka ultimately did after those 7 days is they caught a Militech Corpo employee, they sold kill him, they extract all of the information he had and they attack basically the HQ of Militech in Night City, they bomb it to hell. So now Militech has to well, hit back and that's exactly what happened and the full-on scale conflict between the two actually started. 
And as the fourth corporate war was going on and these two were going completely off on each other, the casualties were bad on both sides, both on Militech and Arasaka. So you had different governments looking at this and saying like we have to stop this because if we let this conflict escalate, things are not going to end up well. So what basically Japanese government and the United States government along with, you know, Texas decided to do is to nationalize both companies, to basically have them under control. So they started taking their lands, their resources and everything which they could do to cripple them and that's what happened. Both Arasaka and Militech got crippled to the point where ultimately they decided to stop. So after the nationalization started, both kinda started dwindling down when it came to their wars, but you see Militech and New USA didn't want to let Arasaka just slide through just like that, so they wanted to find a way to eliminate them if they can. And then at that time, perfectly, you have Johnny Silverhand, a rocker boy who wants to burn something down. So you have Militech looking at this and saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna do something with this. So they organize a strike team with Morgan Blackhand and they basically say to Johnny, well, we're gonna be helping you with this. And we also brought a small tactical nuclear device so you can set it off. And that's what happened, the nuclear device went off and Arasaka blamed Militech, Militech blamed Arasaka for it, it went on and on. But ultimately what happened is that this nuclear bomb cost a lot of people their lives in Night City and it also crippled Militech and Arasaka even more. And with everything happening after that, things kinda calmed down. You see, Lundy was a bit of a problematic man because he wanted for this war to continue. Because he didn't only fight Arasaka, he was fighting the Japanese and that's what his goal was. So ultimately this goal kinda cost him a lot of friendships and everyone or well most people in Militech and the government did not really like him so he was, you know, kinda removed from Militech or removed from, you know, being on the spotlight so they can focus on other stuff now in 2077. And even with all of the problems which happened to this company, Militech still stays where it is right now, being one of the biggest mega corporations still waiting for their chance to hit back at Arasaka eventually. So this is everything for today, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to tell me down below what do you think about all of this, and if you enjoyed the video of course smash that like and subscribe button. Also huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters, and if you wanted to support the channel in an extra way, you can do it via the link below. This is LKM signing out, stay classy everyone, and bye bye. Go, go.